Hello everyone and welcome to another Let's Play. This is a different kind of Let's Play from what we're used to. This is Dropship United Peace Force, which is a childhood favourite game of mine. It is a flight simulation game. And it's one of the games that I used to play a hell of a lot as a kid. So let's um, just put in our name, Rudy. I am a massive fan of flight simulation games. I love them to bits. Things like Ace Combat, Hawks, Dropship. I think that was an actual site when this game was released. <coughs> so this is um, a flight simulation game. I do not need to do the training missions, so I'm going to skip them. Because I've played this game a crap, and it's actually very difficult. It is a very difficult game to actually complete. So we've got unlock personnel manual blah blah blah. That's all of our credits there. Let's look at our Captain Ethan Holbrook, a West Point officer with Maple Cross and Dagger decorations for the invasion of Cuba. Holbrook has been a UPF squadron leader for six years. He oversaw the disastrous Operation Blue Scythe in Australia in 2041, when three dropships collided. Six to eight UPF operatives lost their lives in the incident, and to this day, this remains the worst peacetime incident in UPF history. No blame was apportioned to Holbrook, he has no recorded demands against him on file, but he is widely known to suffer from a quick, volatile temper and to push his forces harder than others, more cautious squadron leaders. Flight Officer Eva Kandinsky Eva Kandinsky joined the UPF in 2042. She was more of a competent pilot, flying from the age of 13. She placed highly in the European Fighter Sword competition in 2043 against 200 other pilots, but her love of and knowledge about the 5th generation air vehicles and weapons instead led her to become a co-pilot and navigation slash weapons officer. This role has suited her well, and not only is Kandinsky an operating flyer, but she has taken part in research and development projects for the UPF to improve and design the weaponry systems. Doubts, however, appear on Kandinsky's file about her discipline and ability to follow orders without question. Her intellect, powerful as it is, sometimes clashes with her role as a frontline UPF operative. Um, Sergeant Wolfgang Kreisler The special forces element of the UPF is shrouded in secrecy. Wolfgang Kreisler is one of the most senior and experienced field troops in the unit, but detailed information about him, his operational history and even his decorations are kept highly classified. Kreisler, from southern Germany, has served in several theatres of combat and is known within the world of the Special Forces as one of the best ground troops there is. Like many of his type, Kreisler is not interested in promotion or his career progression in the UPF, but instead prides himself on being an efficient, sharp tool with which the UPF can carry out surgical strikes and operations. Commander Chi Jian Lo a veteran of the Chinese War of Freedom, Chi Chan Lao has vast experience in both fixed-wing and rotary-wing aircraft. He has led various combat squadrons, but most notably guided the 109th Tactical Retaliation Wing to victory in the Beijing Air War, a testament to his superb flying ability, lightning-fast reactions and, most importantly, his tactical awareness. He successfully overcame post-traumatic stress disorder after the Chinese conflict, but UPF regulations state that PTSD remains permanently on his file and General Max Fraser III. Born during the nuclear standoffs of the early 21st century, Max Fraser rose through the ranks of the Canadian Army before heading up the United Nations Protective Force across the world. 
After his success with Uni Pro 4, can't read that correctly, he was the first choice of the newly formed UPF as commander in chief. Fraser's strength is said to be his overall vision. He leaves the tactics and strategy to those employed for such tasks and concentrates on the political military aspects of running the world's most powerful force and the only true pan global combat outfit. So, enough about that. Let's quickly go into our options. Um, I am happy to go with the. Yes, I am happy to go with the. Oops, I. No, maybe not, because that did not go, did not, my recording screen did not like that, so I'll leave it at 50. Um, let's turn the music down. Uh, raise that, and raise that. And game settings, auto landing, vibration, mission subtitles, this is all good. Okay, so let's, can we, let's begin. Start campaign. So that's that. That's the campaign summary. Give me a. Oh, I'll shut up. Okay, people, settle it down. We got everyone here? The UPF's finest team members, chiefs. Right, listen up. We've got a job to do. I love this game. This game's this game is my childhood basically. It's not all air combat, there is also some um ground combat. We're gonna drop two econ teams at separate points. They'll examine the two smaller facilities and will converge at the third larger one where the satellites pick up the most activity. Bravo Wing, you'll be dropping the first recon team at the landing zone on your radar. Secrecy is everything here. Stay low, fast, and keep away from populated areas. <laughs> Echo Wing, that's JC and Martins, will drop the other recon team at their insertion LZ. Clear? Good. Okay, here we go. The two AAVs of Recon 1. The LZ will be programmed into your radar display. Stay low, fast, and safe. Now, this is a very difficult game. There isn't really any difficulty setting to the game, so I couldn't make it easier even if I wanted to, but it is very difficult, but very challenging, but that is what is so great about it, is that it's so challenging. For the UPF. This should be a piece of cake. You can tell it's a bit of an outdated game. Okay, let's. So you have two modes: you have flight and you have hover mode. 
you can only really access um, flight mode once you get above a certain speed, but you can drop into hover mode at any time and that will automatically decrease your speed very quickly. So right now we have an obligatory um, canyon air segment where we have to fly through the canyon. That's just to be impossible for me. And I really hope I do not die because it has been some time since I played this game. I last played it when I actually when I actually went to finish it without using cheat codes. Okay, there's just follow the blue. This is Echo One. Number two engine is overheating. We're shutting it down. Aborting the drop and returning to base. Nothing too bad for this. And then autopilot can take care of the rest. That's just our first landing. <laughs> Echo One's gone tech and has had to return to base. Bravo Two, you have been assigned Echo One's duties. Transfer his cargo to the correct LZ. So, there we go. Cargo 1 deployed. Let's get back to it. Now, we don't have any weapons at the point because this is simply a recon mission at this point in time. I do, I do love this game. This game does have difficult, um, challenging flight controls as well, uh, but it's ultimately an amazing game. An amazing flight combat situation, um, simulation game as well. Let's slow ourselves down and get ready to land. Let's Nothing too fancy for this first mission. <coughs> the sat link has detected unidentified units nearing your LZ. Get the recon team down now and get out before you're spotted. Okay, let's go. So this is the canyon sequence, this is where I might crash and burn because, well, I like to think I'm okay at flying and um, flight combat since I played a lot of them, but you never know what can happen, especially when you're rusty like me. Currently flying about 50 metres off the ground, there we go, 100 to 200. Okay, let's slow it down a little bit. We have 8 minutes to get there. Okay, let's up the speed a little. Don't want to crash. Eight minutes should be more than enough time to get where we need to go. The game doesn't seem difficult right now, but trust me, the later missions will have you Screaming in frustration, I've been there. Making good use of my yawning rather than actual turning. Because turning will basically be bad in the canyon. So just making use of my wings to adjust my turn rather than actually turning the craft. Okay, we're nearing the LZ. It's just around this bend. There we go. Okay, we're clear of the unidentified. Head out of the canyon and towards the LZ. I've updated it on the screen. 
There we go. Okay, there's the LZ. Let's cut our speed. And there we go. Nice and professional job. <coughs> Man, I love this game. But there is ground combat as well, you do fight in vehicles as well at points in the game, which is also quite fun. Right, okay. On my way out. We'll have to stay low. I've input a path through the canyon. Follow the waypoint and keep the altitude down. Basically now we're just going all the way back. We have eh, five and a half minutes roughly. Not much to say about this first mission. This first mission is basically just an attempt to get you familiar with the basic controls of flying, um, yawning, and landing and taking off. <clears throat> okay, everything seems good. Oh, I'm going to have to turn to... And turn again. There we go. Awesome, and uh, we're clear. There's base. Alright, it wasn't that good. We basically just flew through a canyon and back, and back again. Mission complete. If you think that was great work, wait till you see what we're going to do later. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. That was a... That, that's a... You can watch yourself if you want. I didn't mean to do that quite. Okay. And we got four stars on our time taken. I'm happy with that. Let's continue. <coughs> And I'll save. So things do get trickier. Way trickier. That first mission was basically really easy. But I'm going to save the next mission for next time. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Resident 5. Join me next time.